So Magnus starts with the normal London opening of d4. Uh, and the most normal move is d5, but a, a very common move also is uh, f6, which is what Ben Feingold decided to play. Um, and then it doesn't really matter uh, um, unless there's a threat, but it doesn't really matter if if Magnus decides to first go with the bishop or the knight or um, or even or even this pawn, which eventually you do want to move uh, up. Uh, so he decides to go first with the knight to f3, and a very common move d5, and then the bishop, like I mentioned, and then Ben Feingold decides to respond also with his own bishop. Uh, which is is a very common move also, um, and and uh, you you get the the protection of of both of these pieces here with this move also enabling this bishop this full um, beautiful diagonal, um, which is the main reason that he played that. Uh, you also want to play this up one, uh, giving this queen the full diagonal. So now you have two full diagonals. Um, a common response is e6, di uh, giving this diagonal as a response. And here's the first kind of strange or, or out of the ordinary move by Magnus. Um, it's, it's moving your pawn to c4. And um, the idea with moving your pawn to c3 is enabling two diagonals and uh, you know, maybe protecting this pawn if, if things get a bit, a bit messy and there's many threats. But for the most part, it's just enabling two diagonals. And, um, and yeah, that's the main, main purpose. Moving it one more, like Magnus did, uh, to, to c4, is pretty interesting. Uh, with, with, with the pawn being here, the only downside is that this knight is, is trapped. It can't... Having a knight on either the A or the H file is very weak. Um, so you'd have to move it here, which is what you do tend to do in the London system, which is the one and, in my opinion, only downfall of uh, the London system. So moving the, the pawn one more up, like Magnus played, is very smart. Um, although, sure, you can capture, but if, if, if you capture back, not only are you trading a, a side pawn for a central pawn, which is a good trade for Magnus, but also, you're you're enabling your your bishop immediately instead of having to, I guess, waste uh, another move. Uh, so all in all, very smart. Um, from here, from black, it's it's pretty interesting what uh, Ben Feingold play. He just captured on the knight, uh, something you don't expect to see. Um, in fact, by by moving this pawn, you you didn't even realize that this that you opened up the knight. To, to being captured, um, because you don't you don't expect that to happen, but he did, uh, and now you have two options. You can either capture with the rook or the queen. Um, I prefer capturing with the queen, which is what Magnus played, uh, and and the reason for that is that the next move that uh, Ben Feingold is is thinking of is moving bishop to b4, uh, giving check, and with the queen here instead of here, the king can move uh, up. Or down, or or staying down, and I prefer the the king, especially in the early game, to be on on the lower uh, on the lower uh, of the, um, on the first uh, row, which is uh, why the moving this queen instead of the rook is good because if you move the rook, as I'll show you, then uh, this uh, forces you to go up here. The reason that either way. Uh, I'll show you with the, the queen. The reason that you're not going to um, the reason that you're not going to uh, move it, move your your uh, your uh, knight uh, to protect the the king, is now this this move right here, knight to uh, e4, um, is is absolutely deadly. Um, the knight blocks this pawn from from moving forward, and uh, which means that this bishop can never protect it. Um, and now you have th two threats to this. And so even if you, I don't know, move a queen here to try to protect it, I mean, it's just it's just, it's just, uh, not, not going to be worth it for you to, to kill it. So, um, so you lose the knight. 
which is uh, not what you want, which is why it's very smart to um, play, uh, to, to move your king out the way. Uh, the game continued, uh, bishop to um, d6, and here comes the second uh, kind of not that clear move that Magnus played, something that you typically you wouldn't do. Um, in this position, you have three options, two that are, in my opinion, the, the more uh, commonly played. You can either capture, or you can drop back. Um, the reason that I think the best move is dropping back is now if you were to capture, then you can eat with this pawn, opening up this uh, uh, h-file. And the reason that that's so critical um, is because you can't castle anymore, meaning your king will never be in this or, the, or this square. Um, so now you just have an easy way to move your, your to get your rook into the game pretty quickly. Um, and so if you move your bishop here, uh, and they decide to castle this side, then um, you have double threats on this square. Um, anyways, uh, Magnus, he played neither. He didn't play uh, uh, capturing or, or retrieving. He played a, a g5, pinning the knight, which is not necessarily a bad move. It's just not one you typically see. Uh, ben Feingold ignores this threat, as it really doesn't pose much of a threat. If you capture, you capture, and yes, now you have two... Uh, Pawns, but you also have this nice lift for the uh, for the rook if if you need it. Uh, so Ben decides to push uh, c5, and then there's a series of capturing, uh, and then uh, a check by uh, Magnus moving his uh, bishop to b5. Um, and usually, uh, in this position, you're just gonna play the most common, which is knight to c6. Uh, moving your knight, this knight here, uh, is, well, not going to be smart because of this bishop. So you have to move that knight. Uh, then they decide to capture, totally ignoring um, the fact that you can eat the knight, um, which I quite like that Magnus sometimes, he, he moves, he moves uh, things and then waits with them. Uh, again, a series of capturing. And uh, now he eats the knight. And uh, I don't think that that's necessarily the best option. Um, because it's it's moving a pawn that's in the side closer to the middle. Uh, and also, I prefer bishops to knights just a little bit. <coughs> Sorry. Um, anyways. Oh. <clears throat> he captures. He captures. And the game continues. Now, another reason... Um, the, the main reason that Magnus decides to capture is that he wants to get this pawn back. Uh, so after you capture, Magnus can play uh, a queen to c2, now pinning this uh, bishop. So the bishop has to retreat, and uh, you get the pawn no matter what, basically. Uh, and, and also, that is a check. Uh, now Magnus decides to double up on this uh, c file, pretty smart. And uh, now uh, Ben decides to, to threaten the bishop. Magnus takes. Ben Feingold takes. And the game continues. Now here's a very, very smart play. Because Magnus didn't move his, his bishop down, um, <clears throat> this h-file was not uh, open. So to get the rook into the game, you have to move it here. And the king, because they never uh, castled, is kind of in the middle. So moving the king to this square is very smart. Uh, although it is ignoring a threat that Ben Feingold uh, has, which is simply capturing the pawn. A very pretty, pretty obvious gameplay. Um, moving the queen right here, I want to point out, moving the queen here. So it's not in a position where uh, after this it's a force move. And then you can play play uh, some, nice, some nice developments with that. Uh, ben decides to, to capture, um, and right now, uh, Magnus is up one, uh, which is why I wouldn't necessarily want to capture. I would want to use the, the piece to try to get a, a, to try to even out the game by getting, a, one of these, um, pieces. But he decides to capture, uh, obviously, uh, Magnus captures, and now 
he moves his uh, king again similar idea to moving this king here this th it's pretty cool that this game had no castling so you saw two examples of moving the king out of the way to hope to uh, to, to enableize the uh, the, the, the book. Uh, and and here actually a very interesting uh, thing is that um, these two rooks being here not only can the king not kill any of them but also the king can't go here the king can't go here and the king can't go here the king has uh, and, and the king can't go there the king is trapped um, so you just need a check and um, in fact if knight was played then uh, that's checkmate right there other than the fact that this bishop so the bishop is the only thing uh, that's currently protecting the king uh, which is why after this move, Magnus pushes this pawn to, to try to intercept the bishop with this uh, the knight right here. Um, so he pushes the pawn, uh, hoping to push it one more to uh, e5. <clears throat> and so if bishop takes, knight takes, and then knight draw hops back and hops to the square, that's checkmate. <coughs> <coughs> so to prevent this... Uh, uh, Ben Feingold decides to check. Uh, Carlson moves, and now Ben Feingold goes here. Because what's interesting is that Carlson missed a very easy check, um, and it doesn't really matter because Carlson wins. But it's it's pretty interesting. From here, uh, Carlson simply moves uh, this here, or uh, sorry, this here, and uh, that's checkmate. You can't eat. You can't move here or here because of this, and you can't move here because of the. Uh, that uh, that knight, uh, which is pretty funny that he missed. So Ben Feingold uh, moves here to uh, obviously prevent that checkmate, but it doesn't really matter because after pawn to uh, e5, Ben Feingold resigns because he knows very soon checkmate is coming. Um, it was a very interesting game um, because it showed some, some uh, twists uh, on the London. Um, very ordinary, ordinary, ordinary. But then this idea is is pretty pretty impressive that Magnus thought of this. It's a a good way to sacrifice a pawn to to make some extra room and some more development. Um, and similar with with moving this here, I I still think that this could have been a better move, uh, especially. And I'll skip to the to end game. Uh, oh, especially. Um, here, when uh, he had to get the uh, the rook out of this position, so he had to waste the move by moving the king out. Uh, anyways, it's a very fun opening uh, with many different kind of uh, things that you can you can play with it. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed and learned something, and uh, hopefully, you guys choose to to use this opening because it's it's very fun. Uh, either way, thank you guys uh, for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.